Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner. It's time for Lumi Financial Corner with us once again, Michael Zaremski, head of U.S. private banking, Bank Lumi USA, member of the investment committee for Lumi Investment Services. Michael, good to have you back. Happy New Year. Great to be back, Zev. Happy New Year to you as well. So this is the first broadcast since the beginning of the new year. So I know 2020 was a strange year. It was terrible things with the pandemic, but the markets and economy seem to have shown signs of growth in certain areas. So as we look at 2021, where do you see things going? Zev, that's a great question, and I think it's one that's very relevant for all of us as we head into 2021. And just want to remind everybody that these are my views, not necessarily those of the bank or the broker-dealer. Uh, and I would say that as we look into 2021, I'll, uh, I'll quote one of uh, my, my, my favorite heroes, which is a hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, as we're getting ready to approach the hockey season. And Wayne Gretzky used to famously say that he wants to try to skate to where the puck is going, not to where the puck has been. And with that as a theme, I think what we really need to try to recognize is not so much where the puck has been, in 2020, but where it is going in 2021. <clears throat> and, you know, the markets did really well in 2020. We were rather resilient. And I think what that starts to show you is some of the early signs of where potentially things could happen in 2021 that will be different than the past. So, again, where are we going to? Um, you know, a lot of what led the market in 2020 might not necessarily be the lead in 2021. And it's very easy for so many people to kind of sit back on laurels and say, well, I did well last year by doing this strategy. Uh, maybe that will work again this year. And in some cases it may, but in some cases it may not. And I think there's a couple of main themes that uh, we're trying to focus on to try to give us some of that insight. And I think we saw a lot of these trends starting to emerge at the end of last year. And as we continue to move through into this year, certain themes seem to really strike me as being very powerful. So uh, first and foremost, I think the continued stimulus of the central banks seems to swamp every other facet that's out there. Um, again, we look at the election turmoil. We look at the recent election um, in the Georgia Senate races. There's a lot of changes, a lot of surprises, a lot of unforeseen events. And the markets largely shook everything off in large part because there's been so much stimulus and so much liquidity that's available that is looking for a home that, frankly, one of the only places large enough to absorb that liquidity is the stock market. Uh, we're also starting to see a lot of signs of broadening recovery. Uh, we see it within companies, we see it within economic data, and we see it within different patches and segments of the market. So a lot of kind of early cycle industrials, a lot of the recovery stocks, uh, things having to do with the hospitality industry, the travel industry, even um, small caps have really caught life late in the year and could continue this year as small caps typically are much more reflective of a domestic economic recovery. And, you know, we're also seeing retail spending continuing to stay strong because of a lot of the fiscal stimulus that has put money in people's pockets. Um, you know, the other side of that also is looking at value and valuation. Um, there's a lot of companies, industry sectors that have been left behind. Um, if we're concerned about valuation for some of the, the big large cap, cap tech names, you know, the FANG stocks, so to speak, um, you know, what does that mean for financials? What does that mean for energy? What does it mean for other kind of value stocks? And, you know, we're starting to see some signs of steepening of the yield curve, which is generally positive for financials. So, again, wondering and looking out, you know, are financials something that could catch life and take some leadership on in 2021? So I think that the key message is when you look out at the world and where we've been, try not to focus so much on where the puck was, but where is the puck going? How do we get there first, and how do we situate our portfolios so that we're well-positioned to handle whatever is in front of us in 2021? So basically what you're saying, Michael, we've got to just keep focus on the future, not dwell too much what last year was about, and see where we're going now. Absolutely, and I think it's very important to always remember that the market is a forward-looking discounting mechanism, and a lot of the short-term events that we see right in front of us are events that the market has theoretically priced. And if the market is looking out three to six months, you know, we're looking into a situation where, again, how many people will be vaccinated six months out? How many more vaccines will uh, have been, you know, uh, created or developed or on the market? What are all the things that are going to be out there? So it's not just what's in front of us, even though that's what we react to. It's what is the market looking at, what is being priced out, 
you know, three, six, nine months out in front of us. And that's where we're trying to kind of skate to. Michael Zaramski, head of U.S. private banking, Bank Lumi USA, member of the Investment Committee for Lumi Investment Services. Thank you for giving us an outlook of what we can expect for 2021. Thank you very much, Zev, and look forward to speaking with you again. And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned.